the broadcast will quiet at this time for your safety. Regular law is suspended until further notice. You are to obey instructions from the military without question. Failure to do will result in execution. Day one, submerged atoll, Western Pacific. It's great to be diving again. I'm anxious to find our sperm whale family and look in on our mother-to-be. I'm also excited to test out Andre's new tech. Ocean X is expecting a huge audience for our first live stream, given how bad things were in this region a few years ago. No pressure though, ready to dive. I'm in and okay. Hey, Mariah, how's the new suit? Nice. A bit itchy, but I've had worse. How are you breathing? Breathing easy. This rebreather is amazing. Feels like I'm free diving. A genuine compliment. You should have caught that on the live stream. Uh, give me a few minutes. I want it to be amazing, and I'm still getting used to this AR visor. Done. How many scans before the AI is trained on a creature? It will vary. There are many factors that affect the confidence level of a match. So you don't know. Got it. Now, point me to the buoy so I can try the hydrophones. I want to make sure all the tech is working before we stream. Arena, how you feeling? Haven't thrown up today. Well, it's still early. You gonna be okay with the live stream? Hmm. I may let you do most of the talking. Once you reach the boy, you can triangulate the sound of any animal. Clever. Thank you. That's close enough. You can use your dive watch to control the boy from there. Refresh me on the controls. Move the target in circle around. Each sound will get louder when you are close to locking in on an animal's location. If you're okay, I'm going to start the live stream. Let's roll. Welcome to the Ocean X live stream. I'm Dr. Mirai Soto, and I'll be your eyes and ears on this expedition. I'm joined today by two colleagues. Hello, I'm Andre. Hello, everyone. I'm Irina. That looks to be a sperm whale. I think I saw this bull from the sub. I wonder how far he's traveled. Once we have a reliable ID on him, I'll see if anyone has tracked him before. Nice.
Don't get too jealous, folks, just because I'm swimming with dolphins. My grandmother always warned me that although they're cute, they can also be pranksters, and today also very noisy. Can your AI parse through all those sounds? Not using this scanner, but I do have a new drone design that should be better at isolating the source of the sounds. Done. And maybe next time I can weigh in before on the number that we need to scan? <laughs> As I mentioned, the confidence model is complex. You just want to find the whales. Guilty. Looks like we've got our first singer. Fantastic. Hopefully on your next dive you can record his song to compare with other humpbacks in the area. Fun fact. In addition to being an engineering whiz, Andre is quite the musician. Are you still writing music? Not for years. Dry spell? More like raising teenagers. Hey, Mariah. I'm seeing alerts on the South Buoy if you want to pull them down. Okay. Let's see what mysteries this buoy unlocks. What does that sound? Did I break something? Uh, I've deployed acoustic modems to transmit from other sensors. For those of you who have no idea what he's talking about, he means we use sound to transmit data. So we can have Wi-Fi in the ocean. Impressive. What kind of bandwidth do we get? Eh, like 1990s dial-up. Chemical emittance trigger this whole area. Because of me. Not because of me, but because I configured the sensors to detect stress in the coral population. Okay, let's find out what's causing that stress. Mirai, please collect biosamples from any of the distressed corals. Happy to oblige. For those watching, these sensors help us understand what leads to resiliency in corals so we can help breed it into other species. Done.
Ooh, company. Unbelievable. That sounds too close to be outside the research zone. One of the waypoints went down. Do you think that's related? Yeah, probably. Red light must mean a serious alert. Yeah, dead battery. Whoa! Octopus! I think it went in that cave. I'd like to go in that cave. Let's be real. There's no way I'm not squeezing through here to follow that octopus. We'll definitely want to practice diver rescue at some point. Well, maybe. Mirai, please be careful. there. Sorry to spoil your hiding place. Fun alert. Looks like some young dolphins are having a play date. Hey guys, can I take a turn? Frankly, neither do I. Mirai, sperm whales. And they must be your part because I have a tag signal that is definitely ours. Pushing the waypoint. On my way. I'm hoping to reconnect with the sperm whale family whom I have been tracking for years. I'm excited to check in on our mother-to-be. Let me finish scanning them all. I still don't see our pregnant mother.
done. Good. Everything all right? I am now. Look. Our mommy whale has delivered. Everyone say hi to her beautiful one-ton baby girl. Is she okay? Right. Shh. She's nursing. I just wish all of you could be here for one second. <sighs> Amazing. That is the end of our stream. Like, share, comment. Remember, we need you. All of us down here. Every summer, for me, that was my favorite thing to do all year long, hearing the seagulls, the sound of the ocean pounding on the beach. For me, that was just grounding and relaxing and fascinating all at the same time. The physicality of the ocean is one of the things that, as a kid, attracted me the most. That thrill of just having that ocean energy push me along. You could just ride all day. There was no lift tickets. There was no fees to get into the ocean. When I describe to people what it's like to dive on the floor, it's like, oh, I never thought about that. They've never had a shark swim right beside them. Look them in the eye and give them a little fright for a second before they realize that the shark just wonders what I'm doing, just like I wonder what the shark is doing. I started free diving. So when I think of diving, I really think of free diving. Like, this is what whales do, right? Take a big breath of air and they hold that oxygen inside their body. This ability to free dive down to where the scuba divers were, swim around and come back up, was just so free, nothing on, no equipment. I just love that, it made me feel like a fish. When I did my first submersible dive, I realized it wasn't just that I was meant to be out on ships, I was supposed to be in the bottom. I don't think anyone has ever measured endorphins in submarines, but I can tell you they're probably through the roof. The first time I was in a submarine, I saw that life down there, and 50 new questions popped into my brain. That wouldn't have come up because it was this immersive experience, and I just felt it. When you're in a submarine and you're looking at these magical environments, you're overwhelmed by this sense of wonder, you're humbled by this feeling of there's so much I don't know about the world, and you're stimulated to figure out how this all works together. I'm a marine biologist. I'm someone who studies the ocean from as many angles as I can. When my kids ask me what I do for a living, I tell them that I'm an explorer. I'm an aquanaut. I dive down to the bottom of the ocean and I see things that people have never seen before. How lucky am I to be able to share this amazing habitat with the rest of the world? As a child, I had no idea how important the ocean is, that the great majority of life on Earth is in the sea, that the greatest diversity of life is in the sea. My name is Sylvia Earle. I'm a scientist, an oceanographer, an ocean explorer. I've spent years at sea aboard ships and thousands of hours under the sea. I've seen things others have not. If others could see what I've witnessed, they would know how much the ocean has changed, and they would know why caring for the ocean matters to everyone, everywhere. The ocean is Earth's life support system, generating most of the oxygen in the atmosphere, capturing much of the carbon dioxide produced by human actions. The ocean is the planet's living blue heart. Every creature has a story. Everyone, whether you're looking at a little crab, or a starfish, or a shark, if people stayed on the shore, never got underwater, how would we ever know that fish, that they have communities, they have faces? Their importance as fellow citizens, as cultures, as amazing creatures that we can learn from. There's a lot of water we now know elsewhere in the solar system and elsewhere in space. But to have a, a liquid ocean with frozen polar areas, 
It's taken four and a half billion years to shape the world in a way that is favorable to humankind. It's taken us about four and a half decades to significantly unravel systems. No ocean, no life. No ocean, no us. My name is Shane Garrow, and I'm the founder of the Dominica Sperm Whale Project. I've been following the lives of sperm whale families in the Caribbean Sea based off the beautiful nature island of Dominica. I've had the sort of greatest honor to spend thousands of hours in the company of the sperm whale families. And over the last 15 years, we've come to know 30 different families. We know about 10 of those personally. My research focuses mostly on the connection between these families' lives and what they say to each other, and how they succeed in the ocean by living in these small families. They live these rich and complex lives in part of the ocean that we find difficult to even explore. Sperm whale society is matrilineal, meaning it's grandmothers and daughters that will live together for life. The young males live in the family until they're about teenagers and then they go on this sort of open ocean wander for about 15 to 20 years before they are breeding age. But females will stay together for life. They communally raise and defend their babies and they live in this sort of community of neighboring families just like we do. Behavior is what you do, but culture is how you've learned to do it. In the same way that we're all humans, but some of us eat with chopsticks and some of us eat with a fork. We're all still eating, but how we've learned to eat is importantly different. The secret for how these animals are surviving are these traditional behaviors, and that's why every calf counts. Every female calf is critically important, and each one of those that we lose, we lose so much potential. I think one thing that my research has shown is that our lives are really similar. The values that we have in our families, love your mom, be a good neighbor, learn from your grandmother's experience. And ultimately life is about the quality of the relationships that you build with those around you, whether you're a whale or not. The secrets that my grandmother learned are helping me to survive now. Ensuring that these grandmothers survive to be grandmothers to share their stories and ensuring that these babies live long enough to learn them is what's going to enable these animals to be around for a long time.
like and share if you enjoyed the video and think others might benefit from this. And of course, subscribe and hit the notification button if you are new to the channel and want to be notified every time I post a video.